Hey everybody, I'm Cody with Lucky Shot Archery. Today, Mount Dakota Outdoors has come in to videotape and watch me do a complete bow build on the new Hoyt Z1S. This is going to be a wilderness riser with black limbs. It's 70 pounds and will be at a 28 inch draw. I'll be setting it up with the Hamsky Epsilon Limb Driven Rest, the new Spot Hog Fast Eddy Picatinny Mount 3 Pin Sight. Be putting a new Hoyt Super Light 6 Arrow Quiver on it. But to start off today, we're going to put on a new set of strings and cables. So the first thing I'm going to do is put it in the uh, Last Chance Archery Power Press. I got the new limb lock kit, which helps support the lower portion of the limbs in here to switch out the strings and cables. I've already preset the limb width for it, so you don't have to watch me do that. But what's nice about this new press is the, uh, the fingers fold with the limbs and then you support it with these bottom braces. So I got my strings completely off the bow and now I'm going to start putting on the new strings and cables. I'm going to start in the reverse order of what I took it off. So I'm going to start with the uh, um, cable that's coming off the bottom cam onto the riser side roller guard and then up into the other um, side of the cam. So the stock strings from Hoyt are going to come with these little rubber pieces in the string called string leeches. Essentially they're a dampening device that you use, but when you order strings for a from a company like Gas Bow Strings, they're not going to have the string leeches in them, so if you want them in those strings, you'll have to take them out of the old strings and put them in the new ones. So it's highly important when you finish getting your new strings and cables on before you start decompressing your bow, go back and make sure that every single cable and string is all the way in the correct channel so that way you don't have it slip out in between the limbs, putting pressure on the axle or anything um, in between. You don't want to damage any portion of the string or the axles, the spacers in between. Um, so just double check it and then normally when I'm going to lift it out of the press, get some tension on the string, make sure everything's functioning properly and then slowly let that press out. And now we got the new strings and cables on the bow. So now I'm going to start looking at cam orientation, um, where it was lying now compared to where it was. Then I'll continue with the install and then I'll work on the timing once I have a D loop and a knocking point and I can put it on the drawboard. So now that I've got the new strings and cables on my bow, I'm going to install the rest. First, I have to assemble it using the core mounting system. And then once I get the rest on the bow, I'm going to set my knocking point, tie in a D loop, and get that rest cord attached to a limb. So right now I'm using the Hamsky Gen 2 Pro level to get my bow level based on it being attached to the string. Use that to start setting my knocking point. Um, you can use various different levels to try and make sure you get your arrow where you want it to be in relation to the rest. Uh, I know Hamsky just kicked out their brand new one. I haven't even gotten mine yet. Um, but normally I do this more off of setting it looking at where it's at, throwing a small level on it, and then tying in uh, the knocking point. So for the knocking point that I'm tying on, I use the double overhand knot method back and forth on each side for three, and then I slip one in between the second and third, tie it down, and then a single overhand knot after that, cut and burn. Sometimes I will do just a bottom knocking point. It's kind of dependent on the bow and the situation and the draw length. Um, sometimes I will do both a top and bottom knocking point. Personally, I'm only going to run a bottom knocking point for now. So I'm going to slide that in between the second and third for my last one. Tighten it down, 
single overhand knot tight. Let that cool for a minute. Before I put it all the way down, I'll check to see how tight, if I got a little bit of room in there. Perfect. I want to put it in the draw board so that way you can see the draw stops, but it's late at night and I uh, started putting it in the wrong way. Around the cables. Yeah, so the bottom cam draw stop was hitting before the top cam draw stop. So I threw a twist into the bottom cam control cable in order to slow that cam down and hopefully get both these draw stops to hit at the same time. Uh, always making sure to check spec that you're in axle to axle and maintaining that by either letting a twist out or adding a twist to the other one. We are going to get the side on and start shooting. Okay, so I got my rest installed, a knocking point, a D-loop, the timing's dead on, so I'm gonna install this new site. It's the three pin Fast Eddie Picatinny mount slider from Spot Hog. I like the single ring versus the three M the MR the larger MRT rings. So I'm gonna throw this Hamski Gen 2 level back on, get that bow back to level. can see where my second axis is on my site, which it's on. So normally I get this quiver mounted, the bottom and the top 
and then I'll take out the set screw and I'll move it as close as I can to the bow without affecting the rest or the riser with arrows in it. Put the set screw back down, take off the extension bracket, and run it. So I switched out the green quiver for the black quiver because it looks much better. See where that ends up. Probably adjust it a couple times. I won't tie it in tonight. I'll shoot it loose for a couple days until I find out where I want it. There you go. Let's go shoot it. Hey, so we got the bow put together. I got a quiver on there, rest, sight, string, and cables installed. I'm gonna shoot it through paper, see what kind of tear we're getting, see if I need to do some tuning there. And I'm also gonna shoot it through the chronograph, see what kind of speeds I'm getting. Uh, the bow is set at 70 pounds, 28 inch draw. I am shooting a RIP TKO 300 spine arrow from Victory with a 75 grain hidden insert, 100 grain field point and the AAE hybrid fletchings on a Arizona Easy Fletch helical. Total arrow weight is going to be 460 grains. So I got a speed of 280 feet per second on the nose. little bit of a high tear there so I had a little bit of a high tear initially out of the gate so I went back in double checked my timing which was on and I raised that rest just a little bit to bring that arrow to perfectly uh, level and then I also went through and worked on a little bit of my hand pressure and form and got more back tension so that way I'm coming through the shot so hopefully this cleans it up And it's looking really good from here. Bullet hole. Boy, I'd say that's the end of the build, huh? Yeah. Thanks for uh, watching. Hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me or Mount to Coast Outdoors. Um, passionate about what we do. Not the best in the world, just in it to uh, enjoy ourselves and have a good time going. Thanks.